Hey guys, uh, in a live stream recently, one of you asked me what my advice would be for a computer science student or just a, a junior or senior in general that's in college right now looking to transition into software or web development. So today, that's what we're going to talk about, how you can successfully make sure that you, know, you graduate and then you, you get up and running and what you can do today to make sure that you're ready for tomorrow. I want to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. I've had the pleasure of visiting some of their campuses back when uh, in Provo, and it was a beautiful campus. I, I think they've moved to Lehigh in recent times. But if you're interested in a boot camp that also provides housing so you can get up and go in web development, QA, iOS development, UI, UX, they got it all. Check them out at devmountain.com. So um, part of my – and you, you say, Dylan, what – why should I trust you? You're a two-time college dropout. What do you know about getting a uh, getting prepared, being a junior or senior? Well, I was a junior, and I was about to be a senior and, uh, in a CS program. And I can tell you what I did to get a job before I even graduated, and what you should do now because you're gonna have to do the same thing um, if you want to be if you want to be successful and if you want to um, very rapidly be able to you know like how many of you guys want to graduate? and then take a year to get a job. That sucks. Uh, so, or even six months or nine months, you know, probably you're graduating with a degree in computer science, you're gonna have an easier time breaking down doors because that's what that does for you. When, you. when you have a CS degree, what it basically means is that it's gonna help you get past some of that HR firewall. Now, what's gonna help you get the job is actually knowing the skills that the job entails. So what does that mean? Well. Um, it means that you're gonna have to go learn outside of work. So what I would immediately say you should start doing in your first year in college is every year you should start a new side project that's and have one that you decide that you like and continue to build. I'm not talking about side projects like, oh, I wanna build a quote machine or something like that. Like those types of projects aren't side projects. Those projects are things that you build to learn technologies and tools, which is equally as important. And you're gonna to have to do that but you're also going to want to have something that makes you unique, something that makes you stand out, whether that's a blog, a podcast, whether that's a um, becoming a host of a, a regular meetup, um, a Facebook group, uh, whatever it is. But you want to start a side project, usually code related and software related. It's going to make you a unique can and make you stand out because guess what? You're going against other people that have CS degrees most of the time. And uh, chances are you're not really even going to know how to code yet. Uh, in the sense that, you know, you're, did you learn some coding in, in your CS program? Sure, I'm sure you did. Um, but the majority of your degree isn't programming. And the majority and all of your degree doesn't tell you the technologies that you're going to be working with and you're going to be uh, learning and need to have on the job, right? I mean, you're going to need to transition into those technologies. And to do that, start learning beforehand. So side projects are something that make you unique. And then, of course, you can continue to learn these additional skills. And you're saying, what do I... Well, what do I need to learn? Well, if your goal is to get an internship or your goal is to get a junior level role, and by the way, there's no reason that you have to take an internship. Uh, the reason you take internships, in my opinion, when you're in school is because you're in school and you take an internship. Post-graduation, you don't have time for internships. Internships are for people who can't get junior level jobs post-graduation. And so hopefully what you'll be able to do is get a junior level job. And part of the way you can do that is by setting the, the stance that You've been preparing for more than just your degree. Your degree is going to be hard and time consuming and you're going to have to be stressed, but that's the college life. And so one thing that you can do is go get certificates. There's plenty of certificates that you can get that are going to make you unique. That's going to bolster people's confidence in giving you a job. And a couple that I would recommend, you could do things like even do the free code camp cert and describe them in detail. 300 hours of coursework, covered React, responsive web design. I built five projects. Uh, hundreds of challenges, whatever it is, describe that. You could do things like um, the certified internet web specialist um, where you actually go into a testing center, sit down, take tests. You can go and get a certification in Agile and Scrum, study for a month or two and learn these things. Um, you know, most, most programs aren't going to have you get any certificates. Some do, um, but most aren't. And I encourage you to go and do that. <laughs> uh, 
um, cats chewing on metal, but learn, learn those things and, and get that bolstered and get those projects on your resume and work with the technologies that companies are hiring for, right? You may be looking to be a Java developer. Now go and see what junior level Java developers need. They probably are going to need the spring framework. They're going to need to be comfortable with uh, version control, J unit tests, all those sorts of things, whatever it is that whatever field or niche you want to go into, just go look what junior level roles are asking for their candidates to have. And not only have the bare minimum, but go out of your way to learn the uh, nice to haves, the stuff that's gonna make you shine. And let me tell you, because most people don't shine. And that's what you wanna do when you hit, when you graduate, is already be ready and have a job lined up. I've known quite a few people who've got hired before they graduated because they've done these sorts of things where they've had the side projects, they've had the certificates, they've had the achievements outside of a scholastic sense and in a real world sense, so that's really what companies are looking for. They're looking for someone who said, great, you did you did good in college, you got a degree, fantastic. It means our HR people aren't going to ignore you. And now you're here and you can't do a algorithm on a whiteboard. You can't answer basic fundamental questions about the programming language that you have allegedly have worked in. Because as we all know, your, your CS program, most of the time, you're gonna do maybe seven programming courses. But the rest of your 30 courses, are not program related. They might be theory based. They'll cover math, physics, um, stats, and then your general ed. Um, so you, you to become a good developer have to learn outside of work. You have to pick up principles and methodologies and really understand them and not just say that you know them because they're going to be asked questions about it because that is going to be how you avoid that internship that doesn't turn into anything. That's going to be how you go and get a junior level role or maybe not even a junior, just a role that's going to get you in the industry, in the field that you're looking for. Now, what I would say is don't do this alone. The best thing that you can do is find somebody who has similar aspirations and work together. Uh, I would say one of the reasons that I was successfully studying is I had Engineer Truth who I'd meet up with. I had my friend Christine who started a free code camp meetup in Los Angeles. I'd go down there and study with them and we'd partner up on the weekends and build projects and do these things together because we both had goals we were trying to achieve and you should have a very similar approach to learning outside of work. Now, um, don't let that hold you back because a lot of times people are like, I don't have anyone to code with, I don't know anybody, I don't know. You know Okay, well, you got to make it work. I'm just saying what can be a very successful way for you to get going. So you want to get the certs, you want to get the skills outside of school because you're not going to have any skills uh, if you don't code outside of work, uh, outside of um, your job. It's just uh, the unfortunate truth. And you need to master your language of choice. You'd be surprised how many people don't understand sort of the, the nuances of JavaScript, for instance. If you... You know, people who like, yeah, I could do a JavaScript role. And then you go and ask them basic things like double equals, triple equals, equals pass by reference, pass by value, synchronous versus asynchronous code. Um, you know, just some high level basic stuff, falsy values. These are things people with 20 years experience can't happen. You understand this at, you know, zero years of experience. Guess what? You just, I, I, I'll give you an example. I interviewed a girl today uh, for a senior level role because I'm trying to fill some roles at my job. And she had no experience. And unfortunately, she didn't have any experience with Angular and TypeScript, but she did fantastic in the um, in the JavaScript, HTML, and CSS portion. And I would give her, if it was up to me, an internship or a junior level role where you know it's contract to hire. And if six months she doesn't pick up those things, we'd cut her. But that's just me. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Um, you need to be at that point where whatever your technologies is, whatever it is you're looking at, you're proficient. You have certs, you have side projects, and you're constantly learning outside of work because, or outside of school, I keep saying work, but college is essentially your work outside of school because you're not going to have the skills to take on a junior level role um, post your bachelor's program. It doesn't work that way because they don't teach the same things. They don't learn the same things. And it's not the same sort of environment. And there's going to be so much you're already going to have to pick up that you need to make sure you get started before you ever graduate school. You need to you need to already be interviewing before you graduate, and you need to already have those skills. Because like, no one's going to call me back. When you have certs, when you have projects, when you have relevant technologies, you can start applying before you have a degree, and you'll get noticed, and people will snag you up and say, "Oh man, he doesn't have a degree. She doesn't have a degree. Maybe we can pay him a little bit less, <laughs> and then um, you know we'll groom them and go from there." So that's what you need to be doing in your junior, senior level. Um, you know, part of your college career, in my opinion, anyhow. But uh, 
as always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you found this helpful. Um, to me, this is like sort of common knowledge stuff. And like, it could be that I've, I've sort of gone through this in, in my own way, or that I've had colleagues that have done exactly this and been very successful. Um, you know, so it's just one of those things where um, maybe I take it for granted that you need to study outside of your degree program to actually become a developer, um, which kind of sucks, right? Because you spend four years, probably 40 grand, and you're like, oh, I need to learn something. And that's, that's why we get a lot of developers who are like, burnt out by college and don't continue on learning because they're like, dude, I already did this for four years and you're telling me I gotta go do it again for another year on these things by myself? That's stressful and time consuming. I thought I was getting a break. <laughs> um, no breaks till that first job and then even then you gotta keep learning. Um, with that being said, guys, links for the courses are in the description below. See you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 Algorithm Challenge course, get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.